Welcome everybody to today's hybrid planning committee meeting. I'm Councillor Alan Hunter, the chair of the planning committee. In addition to committee members, we also have officers joining us to assist with our discussions, together with public speakers for some of the planning applications being considered, who will be introduced at the appropriate time. For those viewing the live stream recording, committee members are identified with an asterisk next to their name. Can I remind members that the meeting is being recorded and live streamed and will be available for viewing after the meeting. Should the live streaming fail, the meeting will continue and the recording will be available through the Council's website following the conclusion of the meeting. Can I also remind members that translation facilities are available and to choose your language of choice if you are on Zoom. If you wish to speak, please use the raise hand function. You can also use the chat facility, but please note I may not be able to monitor the, monitor the chat facility during the meeting. For those of you in the council chamber, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand and turn your microphone on. Moving on to the agenda, item one is apologies for absence. Yes, apologies from councillors Austin Roberts, Trevor Stott and Andrew Wood. Thank you. Item two is declaration of interest, code of local government conduct. Members are reminded that they must declare the existence and nature of their declared personal interests. Councillor Joe Nuttall. You're on mute. On mute. Yeah, you sorry, I couldn't watch my, whip, my hand up. Um, the zoo at the very end, I'm on the ethics committee at the zoo. Okay, please, uh, Councillor Joe, we're just having a technical issue. Please bear with us. We can't hear you in the chamber. Can you try again, Councillor Joe? Yep. Is that better? Yeah, thank you. Right. Okay. Um, the zoo. I'm on the ethics committee at the zoo, which is the, I think it's the last item. Okay. Yeah, as 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 previously, Councillor Joe, uh, yeah, um declare and, and leave for that item. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Joe. Can't see. Any more? Item three, urgent matters? No urgent oh, matters, just Chair. Um, just for a point of clarification, uh, Neil Coverley is in the meeting, but he's here as an individual rather than a councillor, just, just to be clear on that one. So um, he, he, will, he will present as the chair of Colin Bay Football Club, but will leave following his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ren. Cathy? Uh, Councillor Cathy August? All oh, right, okay. Hello, I'm just observing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, item four uh, deferred applications from the previous committee meeting. And that was 048208. It was an outline application for the erection of three dwellings, including details on access, layout, and scale, with all of the matters reserved. And that's the land off Alexander Park in Penman Mower. That was in pages seven to 30. Um, so I'll now hand over to the planning officer at this point. Thank you, Chair, no further updates. Okay, just to let members know that we do have um, our conservation officer, Gareth Roberts, here on Zoom, um, if there are any questions for the conservation officer. And also we have Matt Bardsley, who is our tree officer, if there's any questions for um, Matt. So I'll put it over to members. Councillor Mandy Hawkins. Hi, yeah, um, question um, for Matt, really. Um, I've read the report, um, so thank you for that. Um, can you just confirm what trees, I know you put it in the report, but can you um, just confirm what trees we've actually got on the site? Okay, Matthew, are you able to come in on that one? Hopefully uh, you can hear my voice, but for some reason my video has failed. Um, hi, Matthew, your voice is really distorted. Okay, um, let's see if we can get around this. My video has failed as well, bear with me. Can you turn your volume down perhaps, Matt? I can have a go now. Let's have a look. Right, is that any better? Can you turn it down a bit more? 
Bear with. Sorry, Chair. Well, while Matt's sorting out his volume, I think it'd probably be helpful if we go to a presentation, Julie. I think it's perhaps slide 13. That may well show some of the trees on site. Thank you. Okay, Matt, can you um, try your audio again, please? Yeah, is that any better? Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, there we go. Um, just bear with me. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what's happened. My camera's gone off and all kinds of stuff. It's just gone a bit odd, so it's, sorry about that. Um, I'll just get set up again. Excuse me a moment. In terms of the trees that are protected on the site, um, we've got two TPOs there. We've got A41. Um, and CCBC 51. Um, they don't protect all the trees on the site. A41 protects the trees nearest to school, for want of a better word, um, that run along Great Gluid Work Road. And CCBC 51 protects trees um, more towards the south of the site, on the same side of Alexandra Park as uh, the Friary. Uh, all the remaining trees are within the conservation area. So they do have a level of protection. It's just different protection in different parts of the site. Thank, thank you for that. Um, can you just confirm for the, the committee, um, you've actually got one large oak on the site. Um, firstly, how old would you say that is? And secondly, is that protected as well? Uh, yeah, there's a number of large oaks on the site. Um, from, from memory, they're all protected. I'm pretty certain they're all protected. There's a strip of oak trees that run through the centre of the site between plots one and two. They're all protected under the TPO. Um, there's one further oak in the corner up towards the school. That's also protected under the TPO. And are you aware that there's also um, a number of unique trees there um, that are unique to the British Isles? You've got the Colorado, Colorado um, white fir, the eucalyptus, Delagatinus, I've most probably got that wrong, sorry, <laughs> and the Japanese fir tree. Yeah, the, the, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're unique to the British Isles. They're, they are ornamentals. Um, so yeah, I am aware that they're on the site. There's also a large eucalypt in the middle of, or, or on the edge of what would be plot one. They've got it down as a blue gum, I think. Um, I wouldn't sort of mix my words whether it's a blue gum or a eucalypt. They're very similar, but uh, yeah, th there are a number of ornamentals on the site. I, I, I do know that, yeah. That, that's fine. And then finally, um, regarding the trees, um, could you um, let us know in to the best of your knowledge, what's the, the oldest tree on the site? Oh, that's a good question. It's likely to be one of the oak trees, I suspect. Um, some of the oaks in the centre of the site are quite old trees. I couldn't tell you the age of them, so it's kind of caught me off guard a little bit, but they're all mature trees, the oaks pretty much. Uh, likely 150, 200 year old, maybe more. It's hard to tell once they get beyond that age. Um, so they're probably the oldest trees on the site, I would, I would guess. I've been putting put on the spot for it. Okay, thank you, um, Matt. Thank you. No problem. No problem. I, sorry, the reason I um, asked that we have had, um, you know, so a, a little sort of bit of development from a botanist um, who worked on the site mm. um, fifty um, years ago. Um, and he's confirmed that we've got those trees that were mentioned um, yeah. there. Um, you know, they were planted. Um, and also um, the large oak tree at the centre of the plot is believed to be um, between 300 and 400 years old. Um, mm. So I, I just think that's quite significant, um, you know, for members to know um, in relation to that. Obviously, for myself as well, 
I think um, we do have to protect um, the biodiversity on the site and, and the wildlife, um, you know, that, that we've got there, which, yes, whilst you, you've got, you know, precautions in there to do that, a site with houses as big as these is going to have, you know, some impact, you know, on that quite considerable impact, I'd say. Um, we've also got to go back to as well that um, the Welsh Government um, have actually got their own sort of stance on this in regards to, you know, protecting, you know, the environment um, and future generations wellbeing act um basically comes into this so i i really do think it's important that we consider everything that is on here you know we're talking three large houses you know that will be on the site with large houses you, you're going to get it's normally a minimum of two cars per house um so you are going to have increase in traffic there we've got to take the other issues into account as well that we we have got a school right there you know within close proximity we saw that road you know when, when we went there you can only imagine what that's like in the busy periods when you've got traffic i've already um you know i'd source like reports that you know, when you have got, you know, um, the bus or something going up there, you can't get anything else, um, you know, up there. So you are going to have a bottleneck, you know, of traffic being built up. So we need to be taking in all these accounts. We need to be taking in the regard, you know, of the opinions of residents who live in the area. And we also um, need to be taking in the opinion of the town council there, who've also put in their concerns, you know, for this development as well. Um, we're, we're not talking about affordable housing. We, we know there's a need for affordable housing. These are houses that are large, that the majority of the community most probably would not be able to afford. And we're talking here about building on a conservation area. Now, to me, if it's a conservation area, conservation areas are supposed to be protected. If we're not protecting our conservation areas and we're not protecting the trees with the TPOs that are on them, what are they there for? What do we have those, you know, conservation area protection for? What do we have the TPOs for? You know, when we can just decide to rip them down because, you know, someone wants to build, you know, large lovely houses yeah you've got protections in place there for management but as the years go on we know garden gardens will encroach and they'll do their own thing we need to look after the future generations and um, we need to make sure you know Welsh government are doing all they can to get as many trees planted as possible and we're talking about going into an area where we've got large well-established plants you know, and trees, and we're looking at ripping them up. And I just think we, we can't do it. I, I'll obviously let any, anyone else speak, but uh, when you're happy to, I'm happy to propose refusal of this. Thank you. Can I just bring in the planning officer for bringing in Councillor Evo, please? Paula Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of points that I'd like to make. I mean, firstly, this this site falls within the settlement boundary. Um, so in terms of the principle for building um, residential properties, it is policy compliance. And also for building within a conservation area, the test really there is whether or not the proposal will um, enhance or preserve the conservation area. So that's just something to sort of bear in mind when deliberating over the application. Um, sorry, Julia, can I go back to the presentation again? Um, I can't remember which slide it is, but there will, will be a layout plan showing the landscaping detail there. Um, it's probably a little bit before that plan. 
I remember rightly. Uh, sorry, it's the, yeah, thank you. It should show the three three plots on there. Yeah, I think that's the one. Um, I don't know if you can see it that clearly, but layout forms part of this application and what this plan shows is that those trees that are protected, um, the development has been built around those trees to preserve the trees. Obviously, there will be some more trees that aren't protected under the tree preservation status that will need to be removed as part of the development or proposals. Um, and we will also be looking for additional mitigation in the form of additional planting as well. Um, our ecologist is also looking for um, a management and maintenance plan as well um, to be provided through a section 106 agreement. Um, that's it for now, thank you. Okay, thank you, Paula. Um, Councillor Eva Lloyd, and then I see Councillor Chris Cater. Councillor Eva. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'd just like to raise a few points with Matt Barsley, really. Um, the oaks there, obviously, uh, they've been TPO'd because they come under the Ancient Woodland um, Act, Matt. Would they be in that classification? Uh, the TPO uh, is from 1992, so it's probably it was probably as a result of, of potential development rather than for any other reason. Um, okay. And, and then, just just as Paula said, actually, the TPO, uh, the way the plots are laid out, doesn't actually impact on the TPOs. No. Okay. So, as in, in any compartment of woods. You can sometimes have selective thinning, which would encourage, especially if it was a 30% reduction of when you start thinning the actual oak trees to make them grow on. Because if they're cutting too many dead limbs, you know and I know they just become problematic, especially when there's younger trees taking their, their, their um, uh, what's my in English, um, their energy, their um, yeah. nutrient, nutrients, sorry. Yeah. So... What I noticed when I walked that compartment was there's a lot of trees that are basically the hedging trees. So yeah. they've just filled a, a space so that you wouldn't plant them as a tree. They're kind of a more of a hedging tree just to fill a space. So it's very much an amenity, a garden type site. So there's a lot of trees out there that you would, for sustainability, take out to thin. So I see it under Tan 1, this development is, if you were thinning out, I, I think there's a, a very strong case for building here because they're very well mitigated in the first place. Uh, put that with Tan 1, and I think, yeah, I, I've got no reason to object it, really. I think it's in, uh, uh, as you say in Welsh, and there it's, it's in its place, really, because it's, the, only th the only one thing is that tree on the corner, that, um, that uh, Scots pine, which is obviously a natural region, it's, it's second generation, that seed on the corner, that would have to come out. Would you have a problem with that tree coming out, Matt? Because it's obviously only a small uh, DBH, the only uh, small uh, diameter. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I did at first, but then I went and had a look at the tree in more detail, and um, I, I think it could be replicated. But uh, obviously, it's a shame to see it gone, but I think it could be replicated with replanting. But that's a fast-growing tree, isn't it? Um, yeah. A pine yeah. That. So... Okay. Well, I still think I'm going to propose that we um, go with the recommendation. Sorry, go study that we actually approve the uh, development because it's so well mitigated. And Tan One, the, the we do need houses in Conway, and we have to put them in. And this is in the development area, so that's all I'd say, dear. Okay, thank you, Councillor Evo. I'll bring in Councillor Chris Case and see a couple more hands up on Zooms, Nigel and uh, Councillor Joe. So I'll bring you in shortly. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, well, if, if this um, application was going to be refused, it, it would obviously have to be on conservation and ecology grounds. Um, as, as far as the highway side go, I, I, you know, I, I do uh, welcome the improved junction visibility the pedestrian footway and the entrance widening um, and so on. 
Um, so I, I and highways seem to be um, happy with the application as it now stands. So if we turn to ecology, the ecologist ha has given a, a very thorough report and um, you know it has considered what would be needed to be done for mitigation. Uh, areas and a woodland management plan and I notice in ecologist our own ecology says that uh, biodiversity avoidance mitigation measures and enhancement features can be controlled okay thank you right well uh, I'll uh, just go I, I presume you heard it more or less up until I mentioned the uh our own ecologist. Yes, we did. Chris, um, and that's fine. In, in, is that better? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Uh, so the our own ecologist uh, obviously has had concerns and has considered mitigation, buffer areas, the woodland management plan, and everything, but seems to be satisfied as far as I can see on section 40 of the report. Uh, it, it, um, the officer feels that the mitigation measures and enhancement features can be controlled by conditions. So uh, I, I, I don't think we're gonna have a lot of um, support from the specialists in, in refusing on that ground. I'm pleased the conservation officer, Gareth is here with us today, because I just want to, there's quite a few uh, re responses to this application. And um, I just would like to get his final opinion on the, sensitivity of the design and the potential adverse impact uh, on the greenery on the site and of course the existing friary building um, you know we know that many of the trees do consist a a, a positive um, positive element in the design and position of of the the, the building so could I just put um, ask Gareth to to make some final final comments from a conservation side, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, no, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, yeah, from a conservation point of view, obviously the the Penakai, um, conservation area one of the more, one of its most kind of memorable features really is its um, the kind of the open space and the small gardens, the well well wooded gardens in the area, which is particularly pleasing so um, the duty garden needs to be given to that there's obviously a large number of deciduous trees that give some seasonal variation which obviously adds to the character of that conservation area um, in the conservation area appraisal um, you know is dated Dockwell's in draft documents from um, 2006 that has identified this area, uh, this piece of land really has, has been ripe for development. And that any development on it needs to be considered and considerate of the characteristics of the area. So in terms of, of this development, uh, I notes that, you know, in 2000, just get the figures here, uh, an erection of seven dwellings was withdrawn in 2008 and an erection of nine dwellings was refused in 1991. But obviously having that many dwellings on that piece of ground would have been overdevelopment and would have um, most certainly have lost a lot of those trees which are being saved in this scheme. So I think that the kind of the scale of development is kind of correct and that it won't have an adverse impact on the conservation area. I did have some concern about proposed site, um, site layout and kind of design and how the um, buildings were orientated away from the highway um, in Alexandra Park. But um, though those kind of features will be dealt at a later date if, if outline permission is granted. Um, we obviously can, we can deal about the, um, the design um, scale and massing and the material palettes at a later date, which obviously would have an impact on at that stage. So at the minute, on, on an outline basis, I don't have a, in, an issue because I don't have an issue in principle of developing that piece of land, considering that a lot of the other kind of greenery space is being kept and that the, um, the, the size of the plots are kind of similar in size. We've got buildings such as Prinmair, 
Gwyn Vryn and Vernwy, um, you know, of the Victorian villas, they aren't kind of any bigger than those, or indeed they're kind of smaller. So I think the scale is right. My only concerns would be regarding the design, which will be dealt at a later stage if, if permission is granted. Thanks, Gareth. Are you happy with that, Chris? Do you want to come back in? Uh, yes, I, I think on balance, um, given what uh, our conservation officer said, I, th I think um, I'm forced to second uh, Councillor Ivor. I mean, I, I'm not happy to to see this conservation area undermined by three three houses, but um, I think uh, the conservation officer uh, and what the ecologist has said in the report has to lead me to uh, supporting the application. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Chris Kayser. Uh, Councillor Nigel Smith. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I've got a question for uh, Matt Barsley, our tree officer. Um, the trees that are uh, on the periphery of this uh, proposed site that are going to be retained, I think it's slide number five, what protections are in place to preserve those trees going forward? Um, which, sorry, which, which, which side are we talking about? Can we have a look at slide five, please? Oh, so the trees go. that are there to the uh, right hand side, so at the rear of the properties and to the upper, yeah, upper right. So that's adjacent to the, to the highway. There's already a TPO, a tree preservation order in place for the trees to the north. Uh, that right. tree preservation order sort of comes around, follows the road around, and where you can see uh, Voil Cottage, it comes along on that boundary and stops just where that uh, small access junction is, around the, the access junction by the school. So it right. comes around in a kind of um, a right angle, if you like. Yes. Um, yeah. So what about the trees uh, to the south of those that are uh, south of that uh, right yeah. opposite Boyle Cottage? So the trees further into the site and further around are all in the conservation area. So they're yeah. protected by virtue of the location in the conservation area, yeah. Right. Uh, as were the trees that we're proposing taking down uh, to right. put these properties in there. Is there any yeah. possibility that we could uh, condition that those trees are uh, TPO'd? Um, we could look at TPO, yeah. Um, we have to. The trees have to be under under threat, which I know seems a bit odd when we're talking like this. But uh, trees have to be under threat to to warrant a TPO. But it is something we could consider, yeah. I would be happy to support uh, this application, and uh, Councillor Eva and Councillor uh, Chris Cater, if they would consider uh, uh, us looking at TPO in the rest of the trees that are on the, on that. Uh, boundary of that of that site uh, i think we need to protect as many trees as we can and uh, previously we protected trees on there um without the development but now we've got a development in i think it's 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 a necessity that we we look at protecting the rest of the trees on that site councillor i'll just bring in uh, the plan officer uh, paul jones Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Nigel, unfortunately, wouldn't be able to put a condition on the approval to say that we had to TPO those trees because it just wouldn't meet the tests. It's something that we could look at, um, but I'm also mindful of the fact that the, the tree report identifies some of the trees on the northern boundary of being of low quality and value. And I think the proposals or the landscaping scheme that we would seek to impose would probably require the replacement planting along those boundaries anyway. Um, I think maybe there's an opportunity for perhaps our tree officer to go back to the site to carry out a survey to see if there's any other trees along there which could warrant further preservation if that's what you wanted. I think that's exactly what I want. We need to preserve as many of these uh, trees if they are suitable uh, for future generations. And I think that would, um, you know, make everybody happier here. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Nigel. Uh, Councillor Joe Nuttall, then I'll bring Councillor Evo back in. Thank you, Chair. Um, I stand by my decision from the last meeting to go against officers' recommendations. That you have gone some way to appease... Um, my decision um, but I think 
Uh, conservation in this context, as it says in TAN 5, um, involves preservation, protection, wise use, sustainable management and restoration of the natural heritage. We must protect this ancient woodland and veteran trees and any amount of groundwork, however careful we are, is going to affect the roots. Um, the planning system must take into account the Welsh Government's objectives to protect, conserve, promote and enhance the historic environment. Once it's gone, it's gone. LDP4 requires development proposals to provide in accordance with the policies of the LDP and council standards, affordable housing, safe access for vehicles, pedestrians and cyclists. And I don't think we've met that. Our planning obligations are not being met. Um, affordable housing, um, we need to be meeting our, um, the needs of the area. And again, I don't think we are. The loss of public space, adding to an already built up and dangerous road. The close proximity to Penakai School, a negative effect on the environment. The road access will be restricted during the building work and road safety will be impacted in the long term. This proposal goes nowhere toward helping the local housing need. There have been objections from the community, the school, the town council and local members and I think we should also object. Um, so I'm happy to second Mandy's um, proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you Councillor Mansell. Uh, Councillor Eva Lloyd, if you want to come back in. Uh, see yeah, just... Price. Just to clarify, conservation is also to conserve those ancient um, oaks. We need to take some trees out, basically, for them to live on. Otherwise, they won't survive. So we can take this as an opportunity to do that at some point. Because it'll have to be done. And as part of the development, put in wildlife corridors. So smaller planting, smaller plants, hedges, and keep, keep the mitigation of these three properties because we talk about matrices, there still is a demand for larger houses. So people then move on from a small house to a bigger house as they have larger families and that frees up the smaller houses. So we need somewhere to have these kind of houses in the food chain. Well, if they're this well mitigated and this piece or compartment needs thinning anyway, I think we're ticking more than one box. And that's why I'm kind of uh, agreeing with uh, developing the site. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Councillor Evo. Uh, Councillor Stephen Price in the chamber. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> um, I'd like to echo both Councillor Mandy's uh, comments and Councillor Joe's uh, comments on this. The key word here and always has been conservation. Uh, however, we look at con conservation and it se there seems to be an attempt today to mitigate what conservation means to everyone. But the the people that matter, conservation means conservation, and they're not interested in the details. We have a duty to future generations who are meters away from that conservation area. I'm gonna to have to witness every single day they go to school and watch that destruction of a conservation area. This is, there's a, a suggestion that we thin it out, but we thin it out to replace it with a concrete structure. There is no chance of any vegetation returning to that area where that house is going to stand. We also have a duty to future generations to the Welsh language. Now there's potential there that those three houses could be used by people who live, who do not live within the area. And what we're saying to those children across the road is, we don't care because we have no interest in your future because we don't care. It's a conservation area and that is the only thing those members of that community care about. They are not interested in the detail. And I support Councillor Mandy's uh, proposal. Thanks, Councillor Stephen. I'll bring in our uh, legal officer. I, I think we need to be careful how we phrase conservation areas in this context. Um, a designation of conservation area does not mean that it precludes any development at all. It needs to be sympathetic, and 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 you know the the town is quite clear on that, uh, and the legislation is quite clear on that. It is not an embargo on development. So if if you if you want to refuse the application, you have to consider the effect of the development on the conservation area. Just to be clear, just in case that we we're stating that this piece of land can never be developed, that's not what the designation means. Okay, Councillor right. Mandy Hawkins. Can I just um, confirm? Does this not conflict with? the SPG LDP 14. As I said, I'm getting used to all these, you know, terms and everything. So 
do forgive me okay. if I'm a bit new to it and I'm still trying to find my feet. Okay. I'll bring in the planning officer, just bear with us. In terms of the impact on, on the conservation of area, officers do not think that it does have an adverse impact on the conservation area, which is why we're recommending approval of the application. Thank okay. you. I just wanted just to clarify that. Okay. So I'm going to stand by then um, me refusal of the application. Um, I take on board, Chair, what you said. Um, and also, either, you know, um, regarding the conversation, uh, conversation, you know what I mean. <laughs> Put my teeth in. <laughs> um, but what I would actually um, just like to source for like, clear up is as stated earlier we've got some very old old trees there I take on board what I was said regarding the um thinning you know of the trees you know being good for the older trees you know and what have you but I don't think a build you know of the size of these properties so the land you'd be clearing the foundations you'd be digging you can't guarantee that that will protect the roots of those trees such as three, 400 years of age, you know, and we've also, we've, we've got to take on board, you know, what the Welsh Government are, you know, telling us what's actually in our plan and handbook as well. And that is, we've got to tackle climate change. One of the most important challenges um, that face, you know, this world is climate change, you know, Areas like this is important. It's for these reasons that there's such strong emphasis on the su sustainability and action um, th through our planning decisions. And we have to, have to, to take into account the surrounding area, you know, of this development as well. And I take on board that you've put in the restrictions regarding times, um, you know, vehicles can come and go, you know, to, you know, not interfere with school times and that you'll stop, you know, deliveries. But I'm sorry, you, you wouldn't be able to stop all deliveries. You're still going to have cars also, um, you know, for, you know, people working on the site. Um, you've got so, so much and I just can't, you know, support this. And it's based on what I've said, also the TAM5 and, you know, what we've discussed um, today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll just bring the planning officer back in again and then I'll bring in Councillor uh, Gwenol Ellis. Thank you, Chair. Sorry for keep on coming in and out of this meeting. Um, just one point in terms of the design and the layout. Um, we discussed sort of the, the tree preservation order and how the indicative draw or the drawing shows the positioning of those properties it has been designed around the trees but it's also been designed so they do not impact on the root protection areas as well so the development shouldn't have an effect on those trees that are protected um, another point i would make as well we you've discussed various sort of government and local development plan policies um, and that is up to you to attach the weight that you think is relevant but one other policy as well that I think you need to be mindful of is the need to provide housing and to direct housing to the most appropriate location to stop pressures on greenfield land you know this is a site within the settlement boundary and it is policy compliant so I think given the fact that we do have a housing need within the county. I know it's only for three properties, but I think that's something that you also need to consider as well. Thank you. I, I take on board what you said, but I, I, I really, really don't think this will help with the housing need. Thank you. Bring in Councillor Gwenol Ellis and then Councillor David Cox. Carl, oh, sorry, Carl. You on mute, Gwenol? Do you understand? I'm going to speak in Welsh. Um, 
Coming to the meeting today, I was going to keep you what I'd said at the last meeting. I did vote to refuse the application, but having listened to the specialist, the conservation and the tree specialist today, it's very easy for us to vote emotionally and with our hearts rather than with common sense. I agree with what Ivor is saying. According to the affordable housing, if people don't move forward to larger homes, you don't release the affordable homes for families. Therefore, after listening to the discussion and the specialist advice, I have now changed my mind and I'm going to vote for the application. Okay, th thank you, Councillor Gwinnell. Uh, Councillor David Carr? And then Tristan. Well, the last speaker has said what I was going to say, that I did vote against the, the application last time, but I've listened. I've listened to the arguments, and I'm very much in support of con con conservation, and some of the some of the trees will be protected. So I was going to say what the last speaker said, that I, I'm minded now to support the application. Thank you, Councillor Carr. Councillor Tristan Lewis. Thank you, Chairman. I wasn't at the last meeting. I read the report and I came here with an open mind after reading the report and looking forward to hearing the debates. I think we've had a strong debate, very strong debates on both sides. There has been a good uh, discussion and good reasoning. And although with a heavy heart, as the councillor Chris says, nobody wants to see a conservation area, but in fact, we have to consider the housing stock. We have to, as the points made, housing like this, release the homes lower down the chain, meaning that people who are local, which means there are, um, we're hoping that local people will uh, move in here. And they raised the point about the Welsh language, and it hopefully will be homes for um, local people further up the ladder. But as I'm saying, with a heavy hands, we have to consider that we should do everything within the council's ability to protect the trees, and therefore those measures are in place. Therefore, I will support this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Okay, um, can't see any more hands up, and this has been debated long and hard. Some very interesting comments. So we'll take the proposal from uh, Councillor Mandy Hawkins to refuse the application. Uh, we'll go through the grounds uh, if that goes through, and it's been seconded by Councillor Joan Nuttall. Um, are we doing a show of hands, Jane? Or yeah? Okay, so we'll do it by a show of hands. So the proposal by Councillor Mandy Hawkins, it's been seconded by Joan Nuttall, is to refuse the application. Can those in favour please show hands? Four? Yeah. And those against? Just for the benefits of those on on Zoom and watching, uh, it it was uh, four four um, four and seven against. Okay, thank you. So the application uh, will be allowed. Yeah, chair, could I ask um, that? Uh, chair, could I ask that the tree officer does uh, look at the other trees uh, at the other part of that site uh, to see if there's anything of value that uh, needs protecting for the future generations? Thanks, Councillor Nigel. I think that has been agreed. Okay, we do have to take the second proposal now, and that was a proposal to approve uh, that was made by Councillor Eva Lloyd and seconded by Councillor Chris Cater. So, all those in favour of uh, approval, please show.
Those against? Any abstentions? Uh, one abstention. So. Okay, the application is approved. Thank you, members, for a very interesting debate. Okay, we move on to, let's get my paperwork back to place again. This is 048964, it's proposed demolition of existing dwelling and associated buildings and the erection of a building providing 15 apartments together with associated developments at 228 Abigaily Road, Old Colwyn, Colwyn Bay. And that was on pages 31 to 52 of your packs. We have speakers on this uh, application. And the first speaker is Mr. Robin Gilliver, who's speaking against and is attending on the chamber. If you'd like to come forward, please. You'll have three minutes and you'll be advised when there's 30 seconds left. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. At the August meeting, it was suggested that the applicant liaises with residents regarding the lane gradient. This has not happened. So we've asked a solicitor and a highway specialist to look into it. And these are their main points. Land registry records state nobody owns the section of lane next to the nursing home. The applicant's agent has previously stated a Mr. Wood owned it. He now claims that the applicant owns it but hasn't produced any evidence. This part of the lane has large potholes, particularly at the lane entrance. If it is owned by the applicant, why doesn't he maintain it? The applicant is not legally allowed to restrict residents' use of the lane, which is the only access to several homes. The applicant has not addressed the increased safety risk to residents walking in the lane due to increased development traffic. We have no option but to continue to walk in the lane and some of us are elderly and vulnerable. Inadequate segregation between pedestrians and vehicles on the lane will continue. The recent speed survey was tailored to meet the required result. It used a speed gun. And as you know, drivers slow down when they see a speed gun, particularly when it's used next to the police headquarters. The applicant's suggestion the lane can be left in its current state is unrealistic. The lower section has significant damage due to vehicles grounding and increased traffic use will only make it worse. The lane's current profile is too steep and its condition too fragile to take additional traffic. It was built for horse-drawn carriages. Highways are concerned with safe access onto and off roads. Councillors surely vehicles grounding at the lane entrance and causing damage should be of concern. No department within the council has been willing to take responsibility for the lane gradient issue and the applicant has not come forward with a solution. From the evidence, including a topology survey, we can only conclude that there is no viable solution. Delegating it to buildings control is a fudge. Both highways and buildings control have told us any engineering work is a planning issue requiring planning consent. In summary, residents have a legal right of unimpeded access. Safety risk to pedestrians using the lane would increase. The traffic survey was tailored to meet the required result. The lane gradient issue remains unresolved and blocks development. The issue is planning's responsibility and the application should be refused. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Glover. Second speaker is Mr. Jamie Bradshaw, who is the agent and is speaking in favour. I think Mr. Bradshaw knows the rules with the three minutes. Okay. Good afternoon, Chair and committee members. Uh, thank you again for hearing me on this application, uh, which is for the erection of a building to provide 15 affordable apartments and other associated developments. 
You'll note that your officers are again supportive of this scheme and that detailed consideration has been given to a, you know, a lot of issues. So I'll not cover every topic and I'll focus on what is said to be, to be the key issues before us today. Firstly, following your request at the last meeting, the speed survey work has been repeated on the 5th of September by a reputable and recognised company and confirms that speeds on the roads are directly comparable to those in the original survey. And therefore, the proposed visibility displays at the improved entrance entirely meet with national standards. This has been accepted by your highways officers who are entirely satisfied on this point. Um, objectors had raised concerns that there may be a need to alter gradients on the access road serving the site, which may cause difficulties with the remainder of the lane. However, after further extensive discussions with your highways officers, it's been accepted that there is in fact no requirement to change the gradient on the access road as it operates satisfactorily and it is not and would not be an adopted road. In addition, the proposal would result in substantial improvements to the access with the road to be widened, the turning radius improved, the pedestrian footway constructed up to the site and the visibility improved at the site entrance, providing a betterment for the site and all of the users of the access. Turning to the question of the site boundary and ownership, firstly, the proposal in fact only requires works on the land falling within the ownership of number 228. Secondly, the objections stem from an error in the land registry as to the extent of land owned by Woodcroft Care Home which unsurprisingly extends up to the middle of the road to match the extent owned by number 228. And this matter has been taken up with the land registry and with the appropriate copy of the uh, title deeds provided to them. Firstly, uh, finally, I understand that an objector had raised a concern that residents of the care home or other users might be affected by traffic on the access road. Dealing with the care home users first, simply put, as they suffer from dementia, they do not leave the home unaccompanied. And even when they do leave the site, they will benefit from the ability to cross onto the new footway provided as part of the scheme. Something that does not exist at present, but this would also benefit other users as well, of course. All in all, the proposal before you is fully supported by your highways and planning officers after detailed consideration, and there is no sound basis for departing from the professional and considered advice. You should also carefully weigh the value of providing affordable housing when there's substantial need for this in the area, and on a site that is one of the county's largest towns and in a highly sustainable location. These matters weigh clearly and heavily in favour of approving the scheme. Uh, it's therefore respectfully requested again that you support this application in line with your officer's advice. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bocher. Thank you. Okay, there was to be a third speaker, which is uh, Councillor Gail Jones, who is the Arius Ward member, um, but she's asked me to read out uh, what she was going to say at this meeting. So... Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Planning Committee for allowing my comments to be heard today. This application is coming back to you as a traffic survey was requested by the committee. I'm very disappointed to learn that the speed survey was carried out on one day by handheld radar at the side of the road. This would cause drivers naturally to reduce their speed. I believe that this results in the survey being flawed. The survey would probably have shown different results if it had been carried out by wires on the road over a longer period. My residents are very concerned about how 24 hour a day access will be maintained, which is their right in the deeds to their properties. Yes, conditions can be put in place to show how access will be maintained, but we all know in reality that once construction starts and there are lorries, cranes, etc., needing access, it will result in a lane being blocked and more than likely vehicles having to wait on Abigaily Road on double yellow lines. This is a busy road with pedestrians passing by the entrance to the lane, especially school children. There are issues with the gradients of the lane and one resident commissioned a report to look into this amongst other things. This report makes interesting reading, but seems not to have been taken on board by the planning department. Half the bottom section of the lane is not owned by anyone at the present time, resulting in the developer not having control of the lane from which he plans to carry out the work. We've been told that the bins can be collected from the new developments as long as no one is parked in certain spots on bin day, who's going to enforce this? I'm not against affordable housing. We all know it's needed in the Conway, but it feels like the residents' rights and concerns are being ignored in this application. Thank you, Councillor Gail Jones, Arius Ward, Old Colwyn. Did it do the three minutes? Okay, I'll now hand over to the planning officer. Thank you, Chair. Katie, sorry, um, Katie, I'm looking out the room there. You're up there. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll just take you through the um, the addendum. Um, so, as we've uh, previously heard, there was a second speed survey um, that was submitted. 
and we have gone out to consultation on that speed survey and that consultation period expires on the 18th of October and we therefore seek delegated authority to consider any uh, further representations that are received within that publicity period. Um, so just going on to the additional representations that we've received, um, Colin Bay Town Council have no further comments to make and they maintain their previous objections. Uh, we've received comments from Building Control who have stated that um, they cannot object to the proposals for the design and they've provided further advice in relation to um, lifts and access for fire engines. Um, so just in terms of buildings with um, with lifts, the building regulations state that the objectives should be to make reasonable provision for disabled people to visit occupants who live on any storey and the most suitable means of access for disabled people from one storey to another is a passenger lift. However, a lift may not always be provided. If there is no passenger lift, uh, providing access between the storeys, a stair should be designed to, to suit the needs of ambulant disabled people. In terms of um, fire engine access, uh, they've stated that there appears to be a road access alongside the building where at least 15% of the building could be reached. The building will, will be fitted with an automatic fire suppression system, so that should aid the fire service in the event of emergency. However, building control have commented that they're not aware of the presence of fire mains or the location of hydrants. Uh, we've also received additional comments from the Highways Authority. Um, they've They've confirmed that they still support the application. Um, they've commented that any impact the development has on the private access road is not their concern and is something that perhaps should be discussed between the planning authority and building control. Um, they maintain that the access will have no adverse effect on the public highway um, and they accept the applicant's highways consultants uh, investigation and assessment results on the proposals and the logic is considered to state that by keeping the existing gradients on site and not altering them, for example, a more gradual one in 20 gradient, then the existing private driveway conditions would not worsen. The Highways Authority have been assured by the applicant's highways consultant that the new access uh, will cause no damage on to C, uh, CCBC uh, infrastructure and any historical markings across the footway can be remedied during the proposed access works. Um, we've received three representations from members of the public. Uh, they raise objections in addition to those listed in the report. Um, they include that a representation has been submitted by a solicitor, um, which has not been referred within the planning committee report. A representation has been submitted from a highways consultant. Again, that's not been referred to in the committee report. Uh, the officer recommendation is considered to be an abdication of responsibility and the access issues must be satisfactorily resolved before any sort of planning commission is recommended to the committee. Uh, the committee report is not a balanced or fair assessment of, of, of what has been stated and no discussion of the gradient of the roadway has been held between the applicant and objectors. There's no indication that the applicant accepts the recommended ecological conditions or will implement them. The objections previously raised uh, by objectors have not been addressed. There's no legal entitlement on the part of the developer to restrict the residents' use of the lane, which for several dwellings is the only uh, means of access. And any blockage of, res of the residence lane or egress due directly or indirectly by building or construction work uh, would put residents in a dire and totally unacceptable situation. Um, many, of the uh, many of the residents sorry, are elderly and do not drive and the applicant and the highway specialist have not addressed the impact of increased traffic on pedestrian usage of the lane, particularly the lack of segregation between pedestrians and vehicles on the western side, uh, and particularly now that the silent vehicles are more, um, more prevalent, they are a new and real danger pedestrians using the lane. The speed survey is not considered to conform with, um, with the relevant uh, legislation, uh, and the suggestion that the applicants, the, sorry, the suggestion by the applicant's agent that the gradient of the existing access is acceptable um, 
is not based on reality. Neither is the uh, the previously recommended gradient of one in 20. The uh, uh, photographs have been submitted by objectors which show the lower lane of the lower section of the lane is subject to significant damage due to vehicles grounding, and this will be exacerbated by the increased traffic use. The lane's current profile is too steep and unsuitable for the additional traffic associated with the construction and the operation of the development, and regrading of the, of the lane is not possible as it creates a steep gradient elsewhere and moves the problem of vehicle grounding further up the lane. Um, in response to those objections, the applicant has submitted uh, further comments. Um, they have stated that the um, the owner of 216 Abergelly Road is the is one of the applicants of the current application, um, and he owns half of the, the access lane adjacent to 216 and 228, which is the application site, uh, is, um, owns the other half of the lane, and therefore there would be no difficulty in uh, undertaking works to resurface the lane. Um, notwithstanding the above, the application doesn't propose any change to the levels of the lane, and it's not a requirement of the development to be uh, acceptable, and any consequential resurfacing of the access following construction works would simply be a maintenance and would not require planning and consent. Concerns regarding any, any obstruction of the shared access road during construction work is not a planning consideration as it relates to access rights and other similar issues. The access and visibility improvements proposed will provide a significant betterment to access to the adjacent care home and the residential properties and will more than mitigate the additional traffic impact from the development. The Highways Authority is satisfied, satisfied with the proposal. Um, the two speed surveys were undertaken by reputable um, independent external companies. Um, the manual for streets guidance has been uh, misunderstood in relation to forward visibility that should be applied to the junction. Uh, and no service users of Woodcroft Care Home would be alone when using the lane as they're always escorted uh, by members of staff. And in any case, the proposals would provide a betterment um, and there is a six metre aisle width within the car park, which is in accordance with guidance. And the highways officer has reviewed the site layouts and raised no objection and no issues in relation to the car park. Um, so just to conclude, the highways authority no longer um, require that the first five metres of the access lane from Abergelly Road uh, to be constructed with a gradient not in exceeding one in 20 and they are satisfied for the gradient of the access road to remain as existing. The application does not propose to change the levels of the access lane and the works would be limited to the provision of access improvements and the resurfacing of the access following construction works. For these reasons, officers are satisfied that the issue relating to the gradient of the access lane has been resolved and accordingly the recommendation has been amended um, to state minded to grant conditional planning permissions subject to the consideration of further representations received within the publicity period and that the applicant enters into a legal agreement to deliver planning ob obligations including on-site affordable housing and commuter sum payments towards waste provision, off-site open space and highway improvements. Okay, thank you, Casey. Okay, members. David, David. Well, I live quite close to this proposed development and close to the marine roundabout, which is not fit for purpose. I'm a bit concerned about the Highways Authority uh, supporting this application. Uh, I don't know, people, as some people know the area, the marine roundabout's not fit for purpose. The amount of traffic is just unbelievable. I mean, I, I was actually on my way to uh, planning site visit two weeks ago and I was stuck there for nearly half an hour and that's and that's one morning when I, I I was out and about at that time that's that's a normal thing and something really does need to be done about the marina about that doesn't seem to be mentioned putting more traffic in really you know it is going to be 15 developments there might be one two cars for each we don't know uh, an access from the from the lane onto on, onto the main road so near that roundabout particularly at peak times. So I'm a bit concerned about the Highways Authority haven't done the homework on this one. I've not been there at peak times and not looked. Uh, 
the comments that you read about from Gail about from, from Councillor Gail about using a handgun, you know, really uh, people do slow down when they see a hand, you know, with the hand sort of speed thing, don't they? Uh, on the, on on the point of uh, affordable housing, I mean, affordable housing is an average. I don't think those those flats when they're built and with the current situation with mortgages, the people in that, that live close by in my ward will be able to afford them. So I, I don't think we should support it on that grounds. Uh, I'm minded to reject it on the fact that the traffic congestion very close by to this new development is unacceptable to the residents and the pollution levels. Nobody seems to have gone talked about what the pollution levels are going to be. You know, it does affect people, and I think the studies on that how, how, how pollution is is increasingly affecting people. So I'm minded not to support the the application. Okay, uh, just to clarify, it's uh, social housing that's being proposed, um, not, it won't be for sale. Yeah, so just, I just thought I'd better clarify that. Oh, well, I, did, I didn't know that. That's part but, of what but, you were saying. My, my, yeah, I was mentioning that in passing. My main objection really is the, the congestion and the traffic. Okay. That is my main objection. I, I was, so I didn't read the papers. I apologize. No, for no, that, so no, pro I, no problem. I'm wrong on that one. But okay. that, that's my main objection is the marine roundabout. Right? It's just not fit for purpose. Okay. And to put more, more, more cars going to it from a lane that's quite close by. I it's madness. Yeah, I don't, don't think we can even include the marine roundabout uh, congestion yeah. as part of it. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it wouldn't fall under that. So, but your, your comments are noted. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Chris Cater and then Councillor Nigel. Thank you, Chair. Um, if you I'll turn my camera off again, um, just in case. Uh, right. So I think Councillor, I think it was Councillor Joe uh, who supported me in 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 making sure the highways officers and the applicant had another look at the access and the gradient and everything. Because what was put in in front of us at the last meeting. Um, that this was considered was not adequate. I, I am more satisfied now that uh, it has been looked at more thoroughly and, I, and I'm glad that the conclusion is that the gradient of the access lane has been resolved um, as best possible. So that's good news. However, the, the really big good news about this is it, we've, I've been to so many meetings recently where the housing crisis has been discussed and it is serious and we've got a development there here of 100 percent affordable housing we've got one and two bed apartments which uh, housing strategies say there's a high demand for and yes in all these meetings i've been to there is a tremendous demand so i think i'd like to support this application um, and recommend approval I am glad that we had highways look again at this and the the traffic survey was 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 outdated it, it was done during COVID time so I am not embarrassed that we forced a delay on this I think it was right and proper that the the committee did get um uh minds concentrated on, on those issues uh thank you chair okay thanks councillor Chris I'll bring in councillor Nigel Smith and I can see uh Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I agree every, with everything that uh, Councillor Chris Cater has said, but I would like to add my disappointment uh, with these uh, uh, social housing schemes where we seem to be, um, numbers seems to be the priority, squeezing in as, as much accommodation as possible to the detriment of other things. So I have concerns about the low number of parking, uh, available on this site and I also have a real grave concern the fact that it doesn't involve a lift. We have an aging population in the county of Conway and this development and other developments that we brought forward in recent years discriminates against those people who are less able to live in accommodations that don't have lifts and, and we as an authority need to address that um, so I will be speaking with our uh, senior planning officers because we need we need to get a grip here. Our older residents are living in, particularly in my area, town in Gimble Bay, in large houses, bungalows, three and four bedroom bungalows, single widowed people. 
and they can't move out because there's no suitable accommodation for them. And here we are building a social housing scheme that doesn't allow less able-bodied people to live there. And I think we, we, we need a serious rethink here. Uh, but I will be supporting this application. But as I said, I will be speaking to our senior planning officers, especially with our new RLDP coming forward. We, we need to get this right for future generations. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Nigel. Are you seconding the proposal? I am indeed, sir. Okay, in the chamber we have uh, Councillor Mandy Hawkins. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'd just like to sort of like agree with both what Chris and Nigel has said. Um, it is important. This is 100% social housing. We've got to support it. You know, the, this is what it should be when it comes to housing. <laughs> At the moment, we've got to be 100% affordable housing and we've got to be supporting it. But I've got to really echo my concerns with what Nigel has said, especially as the age-friendly champion for Conway um, Council. We need to make sure that when we're working with housing associations or other developers, if they're looking at doing these type of accommodations, we need to have lifts put in full stop. So going forward, I'd, I'd really sort of expect that to be a priority. You know, we're dealing with, you know, people who are going into these properties. What age are they, by the way? Is it 50 plus, is it? Well, 55s, I think. Another year. I, I know we did get told before, so <laughs> I apologize. Um, I, if I could just come in on that chair, um, there isn't actually, um, they haven't specified within the application that there would be an age limit, uh, but it is expected that it would be targeted at those aged 55 or over. Yeah, yeah. So, so we all we all know, um, as you know, residents are getting to you know a certain age and all our health conditions come with it, you know. I've got some residents in my ward now at the moment who are in a second floor flat, struggling with the likes of COPD, not able to get out of his flat because he can't manage the stairs. You know, so really it's it's not acceptable. But I do agree that we've got to, you know, provide affordable homes. So I'll support this. But I'd also like to put in a little condition as well. If, if that would be okay. Um, if Nigel and Chris are happy for me to do that. And it's just basically that we go with the recommendations of the ecologist regarding the um, cleaving, you know, of the site that it's done within, you know, the certain time scale to protect, you know, the wildlife there. Yeah, Thank that's, you. that's already done. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Just to make sure. Thank you. I can bring in Councillor David Jones and then Councillor Tristan Rivers. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. I'm I'm quite happy with the updated recommendations, and uh, I would definitely be supporting supporting this. It's for affordable homes, and we we are desperate for these uh, for for uh, social housing. Sorry, and um, yes, totally. But I I would like going forward for the um for the officers to look at future um developments like this where we do look at um putting in lifts and I, i'd like like that to be taken on board for future developments but i will you know i will be supporting this because it's it's what we need thank you Councillor Jones, thank you. And in the chamber, we have Councillor Tristan Lewis. Thank you. Only to voice and agree with Councillor Nigel has said. I always agree um, with what uh, Councillor Nigel says. He's speaking complete sense. I hope this committee will press on our officers to listen because we need to consider if we need a lift, if we need the market to move people to move from their homes to places like this then please officers will you listen to this committee 
many of the councillors have suggested that. It is a suggestion, but I do hope you will take that into consideration. Thank you. Lewis, I'll bring in our league officer. Yeah, between between that and lower. Uh, yes, I fully understand what is being said today. And um, obviously, our partners out there listening, I'm sure, to the words you said today regarding access to these uh, properties. But there, we could persuade this, but it is totally clear the desire of the committee. I'm sure they will listen to that. Okay, thank you, Rim. Uh, I'm bringing Councillor David Carr. I'm very disappointed at colleagues who, if this development was in their ward on a busy main road, they might have a different view on it. And the fact the comments I made have not even been taken up by any of the other speakers. The fact is the marine roundabout is not fit for purpose. This development is quite close to it. It's a dangerous roundabout. It's dangerous for people on foot. You, you can't cross it. And in fact, they're not, there's no plans to, to, to put any kind of crossings there because it would slow the traffic down. We've got five roads converging. Five roads converging, one coming from the motorway. It's absolute gridlock at times. Other times, it's even worse when, when it's not gridlock uh, and the speed of the traffic. That doesn't seem to be taken into account by the highways officers or by, by the members speaking here today. We all want people affordable housing. No, nobody's dis disagreeing with that. This is a very built up area with, with a high level of traffic. It's not suitable. But, you know, as I said, if other members had it in their ward, they might have a different view. That, that's my position anyway. I, I'll be voting against it. I would suggest, having been on planning for six years and a couple of other members, that personally, as a member of this committee, I've always looked at every application, regardless of where I live. I go out to most site visits. So, yeah, I take on board your comments, but I would think that councillors will look at applications as they are before them and not because it is or isn't within their ward. I'll just point that out. Can I just come back on that? I'm not impugning your integrity in any way, but I'm just saying the people that actually live and put up with all that traffic, you know, are entitled to a voice, and I'm trying to put that voice forward. And you've done an admirable job of it, Councillor Carr. To just clarify something, thank you. Yeah, um, two points, if I may. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to note, members, that the Highway Authority have actually asked for commuted sum payment of £15,000 for active travel improvements. doesn't necessarily deal with the Marine Road roundabout, but they are asking for improvements to be made for the provision of tactile crossing points at the junction of Hesketh Road and Abergelly and the removal of an existing guardrail located at the pedestrian puffing crossing located within Abergelly Road and making good of the footway. So that money will go towards those improvements. Um, what the other point I needed to mention was a point of correction in the addendum. It states that the publicity period ends on the 18th of October. It actually finishes on the 27th of October, but officers are seeking delegated authority to deal with any additional representations that come in during that time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Paula Jones. Um, Councillor Eva Lloyd. Yeah, I'd just like to thank Paula. I think I did ask in the last meeting on this agenda, on this, um, on, on this case, um, what the actual active travel monies was going to, the 106 money was going to actually contribute the active travel. So she's just answered it. So I just, I remember it was bugging me last time. Thank you very much for that. Um, this is a very emotive, especially this back lane um, issue they've got, but I'm sure that the legal bodies will thrash that out. Is that something that we can do in a 106 room? Um, or is it something that they have to sort out themselves? Yeah, they're private access rights, aren't they? So so really, the the whatever issues there are legally between the residents and the developer need to be thrashed out between themselves. We can only de deal with the development and, and, and conditions and so on, which, which apply. Um, I, I think we're talking about a Grampian style condition. So um, some of these things need to be sorted, but I, I, I think some reassurance was given today 
uh, as to the land registry position. But but I I I I think we should leave that for the developer and the residents. Um, uh, whatever that takes, it takes. Um, all we can do is look at the development and 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 condition appro appropriately. So yeah. You know, the whole, yeah, I think Tan Wan is so strong um, on this case as well. Um, I probably will be supporting it on that grounds as long as things sort out their little spats about the uh, the back road. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Councillor Evo. Okay, see no more hands. Um, before it goes to the vote, which is uh, to um, go with the recommendation, officer's recommendation, it's proposed by Councillor Chris Case, seconded by Nigel Smith. I'll just go through the recommendation. It's minded to grant conditional planning permission subject to one, the consideration of any additional representations received in response to the consultation undertaken regarding a speed survey, two, the access issue being resolved to the satisfaction of the the, the development and building control manager and two sorry should be three now the application entering into a legal agreement to deliver planning obligations including on-site affordable housing and commuted sums towards waste provision off-site open space and highway improvements b in the event that the access issues are not resolved or the legal agreement is not completed within three months of the date of the committee resolution or within such longer periods as may be determined by the Developments and Building Control Manager to refuse the planning permission and see that the Developments and Building Control Manager be authorised to determine the application under delegation. Members will go to the vote. Um, you've had the proposals. Um, so a show of hands all in favour. Okay, I didn't have the updated, so I'm just going to go to again the application entering into a legal agreement to deliver planning obligations, including the on site affordable housing and commuter sums towards waste provision, off site and open space and highways improvements. So I have. Just got a message to say that these are in. Bear with us. Yeah, so just read it again. Okay, it's the first bit. Mind us to grant conditional planning permission subject to the consideration of any further representations received within the publicity period. That's the one. Relating to the legal agreement and the fact that okay, that one and B and C. In the event that the legal agreement is not completed within three months of the date of the committee resolution, or within such longer periods may be determined by the development and building control manager to refuse the planning permission, and C that the development and building control manager be authorised to determine the application under delegation. Okay, uh, so we we'll go back to. Uh, a show of hands, please. All in favour? Nine, I think, was it? Ten. Against. One against. And abstentions. Okay. So for members on Zoom, the, the vote went ten in favour, one against, and one abstention. Thank you, members. The next is to follow the the following uh, report is um, four nine nine six eight proposed replacement stand with seating and car park area to the rear at Colwyn Bay Football Club, Clanellian Road, Old Colwyn. And that was pages seventy to seventy four on your uh, reports. We do have a registered speaker who's on Zoom is Councillor Neil. Miss, sorry, Mr. Neil Coverley, who is speaking as the chair of the Colwyn Bay Football Club. You have three minutes, uh, Mr. Coverley, and we will let you know when there's 30 seconds left. If you'd like to begin. Afternoon, thank you very much. As, as it's been documented, I'm attending as chair of the football club and not as my local member would. <clears throat> At a time when wellbeing and health has never been more prominent in our day-to-day -day lives, the inclusive environment created up at the football club is really one to be admired. Our thriving grassroots and academy setup <clears throat> boasts numbers of over 400 boys and girls 
who enjoy weekly training sessions and fixtures. Our first team match days bring families together, mums, dads, grandparents, a real community involvement. <clears throat> Our match days, we have a team of um, volunteers and stewards. And with the aid of mobile barriers, we allow pedestrians to safely enter and exit the stadium in a controlled manner, ensuring safety. Also, we've had room as the site visit, I'm sure you've seen, to adapt the entrance should it be deemed necessary. As we host larger events, we're open to gaining further help and guidance on this, so we'll be sorting it and be welcomed. Our successful fan base, it's currently the largest in the top tiers of Welsh football. It gets national recognition and has helped the, gain, helped the club gain praise and, and recognition. Um, visits to our social media channels will sort of confirm this. I've got a, a quote here from Noel Mooney, who's the, um, the Football Association of Wales CEO. Our commitment to supporting Cowan Bay, developing a new stand and helping the club become a great football hub for youth internationals and other significant football events will ensure North Wales football remains strong, but also grows. We see Cowan Bay as a club with huge potential to go and represent Wales on a European scene as they continue their ascent to the top. So it's really kind words from the top of our football. This development will help promote and progress not only the football club, but the local area, nationally and internationally, helping boost the local economy and employment. It encourages growth and progression and really would be a significant addition to the community and one of which we will all benefit from. As it's documented, the new stand will take our seating capacity to 1,850. Um, this, this amount, this capacity won't be reached each time we have a home game, but it will enable us to consistently um, be in the forefront of hosting youth internationals and European fixtures. Um, we're all immensely proud of what we do up at the football club and the plans for the future. The satisfaction of this club being such a presence within our community is very rewarding. And it's hoped that with a, a positive outcome, this upgrade um, will enable us to flourish further. Um, that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you, uh, Neil Coverley. Um, I think we're going to take you out of the meeting now, but we're going to take a break. Yeah. Okay, if you can uh, press your lead button. Thank you very much, Tom. Okay, I'll hand you over to the planning officer. Thank you, Chair. Um, we have received uh, representation from the National Trust, um, who are um, they're commenting in their capacity as an adjoining owner. The uh, land is within the segment boundary, and it doesn't affect any designated landscapes. But the National Trust have uh, have made representation as the, as the neighbouring owner. Um, and they know that further information should be requested on drainage, biodiversity and visual amenity, noting that they're given the scale and size of the proposed works, a landscape and visual assessment, as well as an ecological survey should be submitted. Um, we will be requesting conditions regarding biological and landscape mitigation and enhancement. Um, in terms of landscape and visual impact assessment, um, this type of assessment is really used for larger scale developments in sensitive or it tends to be more in areas which are visually sensitive. Um, we did arrange a site visit yesterday so that you could see how the proposed development would essentially fit into the landscape. And it's our view as officers that the scale and siting of the development is not such as, as significant as to require an LVIA. Um, there has been correspondence with the highways officer um, and what they've advised is they, they want a uh, plan showing a widened access, the inclusion of tactile paving to the drop crossing at the front, ensuring that the access remains ungated, plan showing sheltered parking for bikes and the submission of a construction method statement. Um, most of these can be secured by condition, but we have... Um, suggested that the first matter, which is the widening of the gates, would need to be uh, secured through an amended plan. So if the committee is minded to support the recommendation, we will be requesting them, them to submit an amended site plan showing the access gates widened. I think it's a fairly straightforward procedure. There is enough space within the site to achieve that. Colwyn Bay Town Council raised no objections subject to satisfactory responses to concerns and the club encouraging use of public transport and active travel use to accommodate additional supporters. 
we've had two representations from neighbouring residents noting the potential for further noise and disturbance from more cars and supporters accessing the site, as well as potential impacts of highway safety and protected species such as badgers. Um, in relation to the, the proposed new stand will allow for around a thousand new supporters, currently the old stand which is to be replaced only a standing room for a few hundred supporters. Uh, the proposed car park includes spaces for over 100 vehicles. Um, so that is a, that there is a parking deficit there. It's not a situation that's easy to remedy because of the amount of land that's within the area of the application. Um, but I think it's it, it's just so it's just a situation that's to some extent is unavoidable. Officers consider that in addition to the landscape condition, further conditions including biodiversity enhancement, lighting, drainage and a construction method statement should also be included if permission is to be granted. The recommendation has been updated um, and it now reads minded to grant conditional planning permission subject to highway matters being resolved uh, within three months of the date of the committee in the events that the highway matters are not resolved within three months minded to refuse and to authorise the development and control manager to determine the application and the delegation. Uh, having seen the sites, I think that the highway comments can, highway matters can, are capable of being easily resolved. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr Thomas. Okay, uh, I see one hand up, it's Councillor Nigel Smith. Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, we met at the uh, site visit yesterday and uh, what a welcome surprise to somebody who doesn't do football, but uh, as a county councillor, I was really pleased with the facility they have there. I think it's a great asset. And with the new uh, new stand, it'll be even, even a better asset, not just for Colwyn Bay, but for the whole of the county. The uh, car parking at the moment is uh, very tiny. And I would imagine, a bit like my hometown, on the football days, weekends, you just can't pass the ground. It would be... Um, a bottleneck without a doubt and I think this uh, off-street parking will be a real benefit uh, to the whole community and uh, um, something that um, will take away that issue of parking on, on the main road there. Uh, so I would uh, be more than happy to um, propose the officer's recommendation on this uh, because I think it's an asset for the whole of the county and uh, I'm just mindful of the fact that Colwyn Bay is becoming a real a real magnet for sport. Uh, we've got rugby down the road and football uh, on this site, and uh, it's it's really pleasing to see. So I'm more than happy to uh, support this application. I would like to mention that uh, we heard talk about lighting in the car park, and uh, in my area, town in Kimble Bay, we have a large number of uh, solar uh, lighting schemes in both Tear Prince Country Park and Cluey Park Park area. They work extremely well and cost absolutely nothing to run. So uh, that's something I would like to see brought forward on that site. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Nigel. Uh, Councillor Joe Nuttall? You on mute, Joe? Councillor Evo was first. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So I can't hear you, that's all. Um, I can't hear the chamber. No, okay. Thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, two, two things stick out. Um, I'm more than supportive of this. Um, Colin Bay is becoming a mecca for football, especially in Tanalian Road. Um, the car park is well needed. It's... As anyone goes down Dolman Road, Llanelian Road on a match day, there's a whole host of parking problems. Um, as you find with football matches, people park anywhere, and this resolves that matter. Um, two things, and I just touched on it, lighting, yes. I'd like to see, as, as part of a, a Dark Skies project um, further down um, in the National Park, I'd like to see and also sitting on the carbon board, I'd like to see LED lights, down lighters in the car park, so there's no light pollution. Because if you start stand on Kilgwyn um, Road above this development, you would see, um, well, you wouldn't see the car park if you had the right lights there. 
Um, and also drainage is a concern. I'd like to see um, some detail, such detail on that really, uh, but we can delegate that to officers, uh, I believe. But the common sense way, if you look at the site, uh, the water needs to go to the stream that runs to the left of the car park development and probably could drain the water that comes off the roof as well of the new stand that way in that general direction. But um, I think we should support this wholeheartedly and delegate it to um, the officers to sort out these suds. Thank you, Councillor Ivo. Uh, Councillor Joan as well. Yeah, completely happy to um, to support Councillor Nigel. Um, we should be really proud of the football football club. They really, really, um, they're going places. They're um, yeah, it, it's great to see. Um, the parking issue, I can't see it being an issue, the uh, the difference between the parking spaces and the amount of people in the stand, because as Mr. Coverley said, um, it's um, it's not every match that's going to be um, attended to full capacity. Um, so, I, yeah, I think it's fine. I'm completely happy to um, to support Councillor Nigel. OK, thank you, Councillor Joe. Ah, Councillor Vitoli. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, just to start by initially saying I'm fully supportive of this. Any sport in the county that's going to re uh, represent Coyne Bay or uh, the county area, completely support it. I think if we encourage parents and children to go and watch a game of football or any game in the comfort of dryness and the seating, it's got to be spot on. So um, as far as the um, trust house thing there, uh, National Trust rather, um, you know, obviously they're going to take that into consideration with you know, it, it's it's normal procedure to to look at drainage and the biodiversity these days in, in terms of development. So um, I don't think that's a worry in terms of parking. And I agree with what Evo said about the lighting and the technicalities of it. That, that will all be taken into consideration. And um, in terms of parking, I thought that um, why not even throw a park and ride in from Avery's Park? It's only down the road. So that, that's a feasible uh, way of a solution. So, yeah, full support and uh, credit to Colwyn Bay and the county. Thank you, Councillor Patoli. Okay, can't see any more hands up. So I think Councillor Evo, did you second? Yep, okay. Okay, we'll take that to the vote. Again, show of hands, we've had a proposal from Councillor Nigel Smith, seconded by Councillor Evo, and the recommendation is minded to grant conditional planning permission subject to highway matters being resolved to the satisfaction of the building and development manager. Um, If it's not done within the three months, the date of committee minds to refuse planning permission to authorise the development and building control manager to determine the application under delegation. All in favour? That looks fairly unanimous. For those on Zoom, uh, it is a unanimous decision. Thank you all. Okay, next application is 049580, proposed warehouse for storage and distribution of wine, spirits, beers, and soft drinks. Included in the warehouse are offices, off license and services. It's plot one, Madonri, Tier Cluid, in Enterprise Park in Kimball Bay. I'll uh, bring in the planning officer, which is Mr. Kerry Thomas. Thank you, Chair. We've now had a, a response from the Highway Authority and they, um, they're happy with the application subject to conditions. In terms of the flood levels, um, you will recall that the that the flood consequences assessment recommends that the site level is raised to 5.1 meters AOD. Um, we've received a, re a revised site plan, which substantially complies with that in that the um, flooding floor level of the building will, will be raised to 5.1 meters, but the external levels raised to 5.05 meters. So there's a five centimeter difference between the two. As the external levels are slightly lower than what is recommended in the flood consequences assessment, <laughs> further consultation within RW is in progress. But subject to that, we um, are happy to recommend approval and uh, the recommendation has been updated accordingly. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Chair. Thanks, Mr. Thomas. Okay, members, are there any comments on that one? Councillor Mandy Hawkins? Um, I'm happy to approve this. Um, I, I think we need to, you know, improve broadband 
you know, across Wales, and this is going, you know, way to do that. Thank you. This is for the. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. We're all having one of those days. Isn't it? It's always good when the chair you know starts. You know what I mean? starts it off. Yeah, no, it's the way you, it you, you can still propose that one. Yeah. Here. Okay, thank you. And council, councillor Lewis. I second the proposal, please, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, we've we've got a proposal, and it's been seconded that we uh, approve. Oh, Council and I. Oh, we got. Sorry, I'm I'm that busy concentrating on the chamber. Uh, well, I was going to say I, I don't want to be seen to be improving the consumption of alcohol across the county, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I fully support this application, uh, Chair, as you will appreciate. I'm one of the local members and uh, this is our largest employment park in the whole of the county of Conway. And uh, planning is really, really difficult to get planning on here for some strange reason. It's something to do with something that happened 30 years ago and the rest of the uh, residents have moved on, but uh, NRW don't seem to have done that. Uh, but I'm really pleased to support the officer's recommendation on this. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Nigel. Uh, I don't think I can see any hands this time. I'm looking at the screen and around the chamber. So, yep, we have a, a proposal and a seconder that we uh, approve. So, members, can we have a show of hands, please? That again looks unanimous. Okay, thank you, members. Okay, I think for the next one, I think Councillor Joe Nuttall is going to withdraw. It's the um, the Welsh Mountain Zoo. There we, are. there we are. So, application 49781 is construction of a single story extension to the existing souvenir shop in the Welsh Mountain Zoo on the old highway in Colwyn Bay. Um, just to advise there are no updates on that one. Um, so you just want just bring, oh, sorry, just bring uh, the officer in, Mr. Kerry Thomas. Sorry, there's just one update. The addendum's been uh, updated um, and there's no objection from the Highway Authority. The recommendation is exactly the same. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Okay. I've been reasonably quiet for the chair, so I'll propose that we uh, accept this recommendation. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Stephen Price. Have a show of hands, please, members. Once again, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Is Joe, is Joe still with us? Does she want to come back in? Can you bring her back in? fine no problem okay and the last one on this afternoon's uh, agenda is the proposed upgrade to the existing eeh 3g eight meter high t8 telegraph pole and um, to be installed uh, monopole complete with wraparound camera to be installed on root foundation and associated ancillary works in Slansanon, in the grass verge corner of the a544 and the b53 Eight two. Just wonder if Councillor Mandy Hawke would like to come in on this one. Thanks for that, Chair. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll put us out to him. You better pause. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, yeah, I, I'm happy to um, propose no the um, application. As I said, you know, it's important we, you know, get good quality broadband across Wales. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Councillor David Jones. Okay, I can see no more speakers. So can we have a show of hands that we accept this proposal? Well, it's a uh, prior approval of the local authority. It's not required for the siting and appearance of the development, subject to no objection being made by the highway authority prior to the committee meeting, which I don't think we've had, and to authorize the development and building control manager to determine the application under delegation. Show of hands, please. Once again, that's unanimous. So thank you, members. And thank you for your time this afternoon. Some very interesting, healthy debates, and uh, we got there in the end. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.